Welcome everybody. Today I bring you the exclusive listing presentation. In this class, you can learn step-by-step -step what you need to know to get a listing. In actuality, the listing is the foundation and the base of our career in real estate. We all want to wake up and have at least two or three appointments to meet with sellers that trust us and will let us list their homes. If you do not have an aggressive attitude towards your goals and you do not focus on a goal of getting at least two listings a week, you will not receive the results that you expect. If you want to display yourself as the best listing agent in the city, what do you have to do? The first thing you have to do is believe you are number one. Because if you don't think that you are number one, no one is going to believe in you. The most important thing is that you create a trust with yourself and know how to sell yourself. Because how you sell yourself will get you the best thing you can get, which is a reference or a lead to a listing. If you really don't have or you haven't focused your business on getting listings, it's time that you do so. There's nothing better than laying on the beach and receiving a call for a listing that will bring you enough money to pay the bills you are hoping to pay that month. Having a listing is not only a personal merit you should have, but a base that we should all have in our careers. Be prepared. For example, if you do not have a listing to begin with, be the one to initiate the beginning of your book and listing presentation. For example, the corporate presentation we offer, you can download it here on this program and you can customize it and put your own pictures and profile. Tell your sellers about you so they know exactly who they are working with, who you are, and what company you represent. If you are a rookie agent that doesn't have the experience necessary, who hasn't been on any properties as of lately, feel comfortable using the exclusive agents around you and their experience. You have a hundred agents behind you, guiding you with experience. We are a big team and together we have sold more than a thousand homes. Use this experience you have around you as a reference for your seller. The most important thing is that you sell yourself as your best self. Make sure you are having a winner attitude that is positive and that wherever people find you on social media, they can know that you live, love, and breathe real estate. In all of us, we must have a positive attitude and an attitude that sells because we are here to sell. Keep in mind that if you haven't prepared, you will not be the first person that gets called. Usually, a seller contracts three to four different real estate companies before they officially pick one. This is very simple. It is like a job interview. If you had a job interview tomorrow, you'd want to be well-dressed. You wouldn't show up in flip-flops or in shorts with the skeleton t-shirt. You would want to look very professional and well-dressed. Remember, remember that the minute you walk in that door, they will be scanning you from head to toe. They will be analyzing you from the second you get out of your car. Let your attitude be a positive one. Talk about what you need to talk about, but don't talk too much. Sometimes talking too much can overpower our natural gift of negotiation. Let your salesperson talk and let them express what they want to do. Many of you are anxious because today might be Friday or tomorrow will be Friday. So what I encourage you to do as agents is that it shouldn't matter that tomorrow is Friday because Saturdays and Sundays are the busiest of all the days. These are the days you will be meeting with your sellers or buyers who want to go find their new home. Over the weekend, we are preparing open houses. Do not think, finally, it's the weekend, because for us, the weekends are the busiest. This is because we are looking for open houses here and showing houses there. Make each day the best for you. If you arrive to your listing appointment with your head down and your hands in your pockets, you will not be successful. Arrive with energy and with your head high. We've talked about Farmingdale. Maintain the mentality that you are a winner. Always create the opportunity to get an appointment. Prepare yourself in great detail and prepare your pre-listing package many days in advance. If you do not have an appointment for a listing presentation, then start today, working on your pre-listing package one or two days in advance. For example, tomorrow or on any given day, they call you and say they want you to list their property. Do not make your appointment for two hours later. Make your appointment at least 24 hours after because you need to prepare yourself and have your pre-listing package completely ready. In this seminar, I will give you the base of our presentation where you simply have to insert your picture and customize it with your information. This is going to be like a show and tell. Do not trust technology. You may arrive to a listing presentation and your laptop dies or the internet won't connect to it or your technology simply fails you that day. To prevent this from being a major issue, take your listing presentation in a booklet. Take your booklet and customize it and decorate it and always take it with you. You can use it as a guide and map so you can open it and tell your story of what you want to do and how you work. Arrive with energy. Maybe it's one of those days when you wake up feeling discouraged. Don't let yourself go around with that kind of attitude. When you are on your way to your listening presentation, do not take calls that could damper your mood, like making a counteroffer to a property 
or speaking to a customer that's having a problem at the moment with the closing. Let those calls and personal calls for after your, lis your listing presentation. Remember, you are essentially going on a blind date where you are 100% going to be evaluated. This is your most important work appointment. Two hours prior to your presentation, do not take any calls. Go into your car and play music at the highest volume that you can. Play music that makes you active and that you can sing along to. Play music that spikes your adrenaline. When you pull up into that driveway, turn the music off and go inside with your business cards. Never, ever forget your business cards. Say your proper hellos and ask them to give you a quick tour of the home. Many of us go to sell houses and give our listing presentation where we just sit and talk for an hour or two and we end up leaving without seeing the house. We often forget that we primarily go to see the house so we can list it and sell it. The first thing we have to go and do as soon as they open the door is take a tour of the home. A tour with an agenda in hand where you can see what you are showing in your presentation correlates to the actual home. There are many cases where you can find yourself where in the public records the house has two rooms and a bathroom and when you arrive to do the listing the house has three rooms and three bathrooms. Why? Because maybe the house has had changes that are not legal or maybe they are legal but you didn't find them. As easy as that, the CMA you had prepared the day before doesn't work anymore because the CMA you prepared was based off of the two bedroom, one bath house. When you go on the tour, analyze the home room by room. What does the house have? What doesn't it have? What kind of floors it has? What kind of lamps it has? If it has holes in the wall or mold in the ceiling or what kind of appliances? You will meticulously write all of this into a notebook. You will ask them if you can sit at the dining table. Never ask to do a negotiation on the couch. Remember that sitting on a couch will not let you be at the same eye level as the other person. Yes, couches are very comfortable, but because of this, you will end up sitting in a different position that will be so comfortable that you will get sleepy. Ask to sit at the dining table where you can speak face-to-face, -face and the negotiation will be completely different than that of what it would be on a couch. Remember, when you go and receive the tour and you sit with your sellers, think of what you would do to sell this house faster. What would you add to this house? Think quickly what you would specifically add to the home to make it sell faster. Or maybe right after doing the walkthrough of the house, think of what struck you the most about the home that you could sell that you could use as an asset to sell it. You must also ask those questions to your client. For example, what struck you the most when you bought this house? Because if one day your client bought this house and fell in love with it, it's because they saw something in it that they loved. You have to find what struck them about the home. Use the company as a support system for experience. When you start working on your listing presentation, you're going to notice many things that will be the success factor of your listing presentation. On to our next slide. When we are preparing our booklet, we are going to start by talking about ourselves. What you see on the screen is a template you can use, but with your own pictures and profile. Talk about yourself and your experience of what you do and what you've done in the last 10 years. Everything that comes to mind that seems important to mention in order to sell yourself should be included. Talk about our company and talk about our philosophy. Talk about how you are a smart agent. Talk about how you bring service and you have motivation, your time management, and that you can be counted on. Every one of your qualities is important. And now I will guide you in preparing your packet so you can go in front of your seller ready to go with your packet in hand. First, so if someone calls you to do a listing presentation, make sure that the day you go that all parties are there. If you see on public records that a wife and a husband own the home, make sure that both the wife and the husband are present. Do not waste your time, because if the wife is missing from the presentation, then the husband was not able to make any decisions regarding it, and your time has been lost. Make sure that the day of your appointment that all parties are there, because they must all sign the listing agreement. If the principal objection or the objective of the listing presentation is to leave the appointment with your listing agreement signed. In your listing presentation, be sure to include what qualities set you apart from everyone else in the industry. First, research the property. Look deep into everything about it. Look at the public records and see who owns the house, how big it is, etc. Take a pre-listing package along with the package also with the listing agreement and the seller's disclosure. Today we will learn how to create your listing presentation. This presentation will create a trust between you and your sellers. It will show them your experience, how determined you are in your craft, and how you determine pricing based on the market, and how you will overcome any obstacles, objections, or questions thrown your way. You must be prepared. When you are sitting and doing your analysis, look to see who is the owner of the home. Is it a wife and a husband? 
If it's a trustee, what is the paperwork for the trustee? Who is the authorized signer of the trustee? Investigate all of the background of the property. If there are any overdue inspections or anything from the homeowners association, look into how much they pay to the association. Has this home ever been sold before? If so, by who? How long was it on the market and how long ago? Create a CMA report where you show three comparable listings. Be so informed about the property that you know more about it than the owners themselves. Ask key questions like, Hey, I noticed that a year ago you listed the property for an X amount of money in X amount of time with Y person. Why didn't it sell? Or, I noticed that the association here is $366 a, a month. Is that true or has it gone up? Or, is there a special assessment you need to be done after the hurricane? You must make calls to the homeowners association before your listing presentation to gather information on special assessments and the amenities that they have. You can also arrive early to the listing presentation and go into the clubhouse and look into the amenities offered. If they have a gym or a pool or a party room, sit in front of your seller and say, Hey, I am an expert in this area and I know this community offers X, Y, and Z. Sit in front of your seller sure about, sure about what you are going to say. Now, when you are preparing your pre-listing package, don't forget to create a list of references, a marketing plan, and an action plan. Tell them exactly what you plan to do. The Exclusive Homes University does offer a class on action plans and marketing. When going into your presentation, take a completed CMA and a completed net sheet. Call the title company and ask them to provide you with a preliminary HUT and preliminary net sheet where you can see if you sell a house for X amount after commissions and taxes and the payoff of the mortgage, the seller will be left with Y amount. Taking this information to your listing presentation can enable your sellers to make their decision faster. If you take all these documents and have your research done, you are set up for success. You must take your listing agreement ready to be signed. Do not take your listing agreement empty just to fill it out in front of them. If you do that, you will start losing points. Take it completely filled out and expected for signatures. Also, do not forget to take the seller's disclosures, but these must be filled out by the seller. Take the forms printed out and ready to be filled out. If we are interviewing these sellers and they decide to work with you, you must be prepared to guide them and the buyers. Always stress to the sellers that your number one objective is to sell their house at the highest price because at the end of the day, all they want to do is sell their home. You cannot go and talk about making miracles and being the best in town if you're not going to pull through at the end of the day. The sellers don't care about when, where, or how we do it. All they care about is results. Offer your clients the utmost level of service possible. Explain that you and your company are a team that are responsible for thousands of sales and that everyone you have worked with has become successful. Bring reviews of previous clients so that they can see what it is like to work with you. If you have any testimonies of previous clients that you have worked with you on social media or any of your devices, use them to your advantage. The first thing you will ask your seller the second you sit down with them is, why are you selling your home? When you ask this question, your seller is going to tell you exactly what they expect from you. Talk to your sellers about the selling consultation. Tell them that your first priority is that their home gets sold. Most importantly, that you will provide all of your experience to make it a smooth and simple process for your clients. When you are asking them why they are selling their home, determine what your seller's needs are and what is motivating them to sell the home. From these questions, you will be able to find out how flexible your client is in timing. You will be able to see how much leverage you have when pricing the home. Maybe they need to move out right away or they need to live there for two or three more months. You will also find out the condition of the home and why they are choosing to sell the home. Maybe they also want you to help them find a new home as well. Answer any of your seller's inquiries. When you ask your seller, what will you miss the most about your home? What are some of your favorite features about your home and location? What compliments have you received from neighbors and friends concerning your home? Investigate all the answers to these questions because these are the things you want to highlight when creating your listing. Ask your seller, are there any problems concerning the house that I should be aware of? Not only of the home, but potentially with the mortgage or any lines of credit created. If they have 
homeowners association, what dues do they have, or how much is the transfer fee? There are many things concerning the house and the homeowners association that you must be aware of, whether it's a physical damage or a leak or a plumbing issue. Always be sure to disclose these things. You want to avoid any issues in the future with the person making an offer on the home. Ask your seller and yourself, what will buyers think of your home's price? Educate your client of buying strategies and how you determine the pricing of their home in relation to the market. Explain this to your clients. Explain that maybe based on the market at the moment and the neighborhood the home is located in that the prices have gone up. Explain the characteristics of their home in relation to homes that they have seen recently sold in the area. Use the CMA to explain active comparable homes that have been sold or are under contract. Keep in mind that what will determine your price is the price of the comparables that have been sold. Buyers will not pay more than what they have to for a home. They are going to analyze the home you are trying to sell and the most similar one that has been sold for cheaper and they are going to see what that house has and that yours doesn't. Be the one who explains to your seller how the market is determined with accuracy. Teach them that once the listing is on the market, the first seven days, give or take, the activity is going to be very high compared to the rest of the days. After the first week, your activity will still be high, but after the first two to three weeks, the activity will begin to decline. The first day you list the house, the house will appear on all the websites, for example, on Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, and more. The house will appear in a myriad of websites as a new listing. The traffic will be very demanding. Explain to your seller that depending on the traffic of the house, the price will be estimated. For example, if you list the house but no one shows it, the price will continue to drop because the traffic will begin to cease. If there are many showings, the seller will see that the house is being appreciated. Now, why is it so important to accept the first offer? You must make this clear to your seller from the beginning. The first offer is the best offer they are going to receive. The first offer will be the highest and anything after that will begin to decrease. Keep in mind that what you are teaching your seller is that the price plus the exposure of the property is what is going to sell the home. Where do buyers find the home they purchase? We are going to develop a strategic marketing strategy. We are going to explain to them how showing times work, what will be used to market listings, and how many days it's going to take, and what marketing sources we are going to use. Everything we use, the format of our emails, etc. There is a program called spreengs.com or pam.tv where you guys can buy a box that comes with a video card that shows you how you can innovate and be different in the presence of competition. Why? Because if you use techniques like that, your clients will see that your marketing strategies are different. You have to show them that you have a system. Use the word system. It is a magical word that psychologically intuits that you are and have a different technique. Offer your team, but show that you are different from everyone else because you have a different system that allows you to sell. Show your sellers the, de the demographics and statistics that if they choose to work with you or with a real estate agent to list their home, the results will be better. 38% of the people who work with agents or find their next home with the aid of the agent. 37% of people find their homes online and 11% found their home through a sign. 2% found their home in a newspaper, and 1% found their home in a magazine or brochure that they found at a doctor's office or something like that. 4% heard about the home through a contractor, and 6% heard about it through a friend. These statistics are very important to share with your seller. The most important thing is that you show them the development of your marketing strategy online because right now, 98% of buyers find their homes online. Show them that your efforts go into the online aspect of their home. What marketing strategy gives the best opportunity to find the right buyer? You have to show that you are focused in a specific niche in the market where you know 90% of the buyers and sellers in that area. Implement offering professional photography into your marketing plan. Beautiful pictures sell homes and pictures taken with drones or by a professional person with a camera better than those taken with a standard cell phone. 
Since at the moment prices of houses are so high and your commission will be too, you should be able to easily invest $150 to $200 on professional pictures. This will set you apart from your competitors. Speak to your clients about the MLS and explain that 75% of sales originate from the MLS. Talk to your clients about your web page and the demographics and statistics of your website. How many people visit it each day and how many sales originate from your website. This is all very important for your clients to see because it shows you spend extra time, effort, and money into a special marketing plan. Remember to use the word system. Make sure your clients know that when you put their house in the MLS, their house is going to appear on many websites nationally and internationally. There are more than 100 websites affiliated with real estate that will be exposing their home. Ask your clients if they'll allow you to place a yard sign in front of their home. If they agree, be sure to do so. Remember, 80% of buyers find their homes from the aid of a sign. For you as a listing agent, this is great because it's a simple way to generate leads. If you are offering professional photography, also try to offer your clients the possibility of a virtual tour. Virtual tours allow people from around the world to explore the home without having to physically be there. Talk to your clients about flyers and brochures you have to offer. This all has to be part of your marketing strategy. Now, you can also speak to your sellers about emails and remain in constant contact. Tell them you're going to be sending an email blast that will reach all kinds of people who are searching for a home. If you can do a postcard campaign, that would also be fantastic. Doing campaigns that say, just listed or just sold are very important. Inform your sellers that within 24 to 48 hours of listing their home, all of their neighbors will be receiving a just listed postcard. Now, if they need to ask any questions, be sure to let your sellers know that if they are to have any questions, you are available via text or email at all times. Also be sure to assure them that anyone with inquiries regarding buying their home will not be ignored. When you are promoting the home to be sold, you must remember that your main goal is to exceed the expectations of your seller. Our jobs as real estate agents is to be there ready to answer any questions at any time and provide excellent service that lets your sellers feel that they are taken care of. That is our main goal. Always give your best efforts. Follow up through market analysis and agent feedback. Give periodic reviews of our marketing plan based on current market activity. Discuss pricing and timing within the market. Notify you on other competing properties in your neighborhood. Inform other agents of any and all changes to your listing. Maintain stock of property brochures for buyers at all times and make seasonal changes to online marketing as needed. What should I do to get my home ready to sell? Well, first, explain to your sellers that as much as they need you, you need them. You need them to keep their home show ready at all times. Tell them to keep it meticulously clean and even recommend cleaning supplies and things of that nature. Explain that unless it is necessary to the home, it should be removed. For example, personal items and things like that. Tell them that they can start packing to move now. A buyer who is looking at the house prefers to see boxes in the corner because they know the seller is moving out ra rather than a, clu a clutter of mess. If the home is not clean, tidy, and nearly empty, they will not be able to appreciate its true beauty. Tell them that at any time they leave their home for a showing to leave all the lights on and to leave the curtains open. Be sure to mention that there should be no overpowering smells in the home that aren't pleasant. Have them clean up any misplaced laundry, dog toys if they have pets, or kids' toys if they have children, etc. Make sure they turn the TV off and any other distracting devices. Have them play nice calm music so that the home has a nice positive aura. Recommend that they do not have any pictures in their home so that there are as little distractions as possible. You as the expert must recommend all these things to your sellers. Your seller's participation is vital. This is a team effort. Always maintain your home in ready-to-show condition. Try to be flexible in the scheduling of showings. It is always best to leave during showings. Also secure pets or take them with you. You don't want your dog barking at the people looking to buy your home. Save business cards for all agents who show your home. Keep a stack with you at all times and leave some on the table for any potential buyers to take. Be cautious when talking to buyers. You could accidentally weaken your negotiation position. 
Let us know of any changes in your property's condition. If approached by buyers not accompanied with an agent, contact us immediately. Do not let them in unescorted. All valuables such as jewelry, portable electronics, collectibles, and pharmaceuticals should be safely secured. Every time you show a home, especially a vacant home, always try to have a Supra. Supras are much better for you, your broker, and your seller. Supras provide more safety and security for everyone involved. Keep your sellers updated on how comparable homes are doing. Once a week, send them new houses that have come out into the market and the condition of the market at that time. Tell them if it's going up or, or if it went down. Continuously analyze the market so that you and your seller know what competition you are dealing with. Once I get an offer, how do I know if it's the best offer? This question can only be answered by you, the expert. After all this, it is the only reason they have come to you is because they're counting on you to help them. There are many factors you have to take into account, not only the price. For example, when the house would close, what other commitments are being made? Be sure to sit down with your seller and guide them step by step through every factor of an offer so you can both strategically create a good counter. If this offer is not up to you and your seller's standards, begin to look at the purchase price. Make sure that the market's price includes important factors. Make sure the listing includes everything that comes with the house so that when you get an offer, everything is included. Save yourself legal problems by making sure to include that the super special antique clamp that the seller loves does not end up going to anyone but the seller. If you are asking for a deposit, make sure that the deposit is handled by the title company and that it is on time. It is very important that you are on top of all of the contract deadlines. Your broker does not want to hear that you don't know 5 or 10 days before closing, that you don't know if you received the escrow money deposit. As listing agents, you must be on top of all of these things. If the property needs certain special assessments, you need to be aware of all of them. Be aware of the condition of the appraisal and of the financial contingencies. Always be on top of deadlines. Once we are under contract, what happens? Can the buyer cancel? When do we really know we are truly sold? You must express to your seller that you are going to be guiding them from the contract until the house's closing is complete. Show them the most recent houses sold in the area. Remember, we are always going to compare apples to apples. Express to them how to handle a transaction from beginning to end. You'll be able to print out each one of these objectives in the material attached to this video. You can also see the transaction from beginning to closing video and learn more about that. Provide your seller all the information they need and make them feel like they can lean on you every step of the way. Let's get started. Start the search for your sellers now. After you give this entire presentation to your seller, tell them thank you for your business. I would appreciate any referrals you'd be willing to send me. But not only that, ask, based on everything that I've shown you, do you believe that I'm capable of selling your home? If they say yes, begin with the CMA right away and explain why you chose certain comparables and how you determined the pricing of the house. If they say no, prepare yourself to handle all of the objections that will come your way. If this material you see here, you can find all of the possible objections and questions that they will ask you. I encourage you to print them out and know them by, mem by memory because they are the most common questions that the seller is going to ask in a listing presentation. In this material, you are going to find more than 70 objections you may come across. These will tell you how to handle them, what to say and what not to say. Remember, always be on time, early, with a good attitude and lots of energy. Ideally, be as early as possible. Prove to them that you are a success-driven person who will get the job done and that they will catch your success by working with you. Once again, I invite you to print out these listing presentation tips and that you memorize them because this is what's going to open doors to success for you. The reason we sell so much faster and at very high volumes is because we have more than 24 years of experience in this field. After you present your listing presentation, you will develop your listing agreement and if your sellers decide that they are ready, do not let them get disinterested. Have them sign the listing agreement and give them a 24-hour contingency. Do not let them leave without having the listing agreement signed. Place a contingency that states, if I don't hear from you within the next 24 hours, you can leave the contract. Remember, what sellers look for is results. 
and you have all the tools to provide results. Thank you for your time today, and I hope this class is very valuable to you.